Hi, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP math. In my most recent tutorial video, I looked at how to construct a stable communication relay network about the moon. The method I used could be adapted to any celestial body, but an important component for doing that is being able to calculate orbits of specific orbital period. That's what we'll be looking at in this video. So, let's do the math. Thankfully, the orbital period formula falls right out of a formula we've already looked at. Let's consider a circular orbit with a radius r. As we've already seen, the velocity of any object in this orbit can be calculated using this formula. Remember that the period is just the time it takes to complete one orbit. Since this is a circle, the object will travel a distance that's equal to the circumference of the circle which is just 2 pi times the radius, a formula which is likely very familiar to many of you. To calculate the period, which is usually represented with an uppercase t, all we have to do is divide this distance by the speed of the object. We'll simplify by multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. We can combine the r's together by just recognizing that r is equivalent to the square root of r squared. Now we can collect all this under a single square root getting this formula. Let's see this formula in action. In the tutorial I said that a circular orbit with an altitude of 1254.85 kilometers would have a period of 12 hours. Let's check. First we need to make this an orbital radius by adding the radius of the moon, which is 200 kilometers. So the r for the formula is 1454.85 kilometers or 1,454,850 meters. You have to use meters for this formula. Substituting this in with the gravitational parameter for the moon and pushing through a calculator gets us 43,200 seconds. Dividing by 60 converts this to minutes and dividing by 60 again gets us a period of 12 hours. Okay, that's fine for circular orbits, but I also used an elliptical orbit in the video. How did I know what the period of that would be? The great thing is, is that this formula works just as well if we replace the radius with the semi-major axis A. Recall that the semi-major axis is just the average of the smallest and largest orbital radii. That is, it equals R1 plus R2 all divided by 2. In the tutorial, I used an orbit with a periapsis of 565.65 kilometers and an apoapsis of 1,254.85 kilometers. That makes R1 and R2 765,650 meters and 1,454,850 meters respectively. That gets a semi-major axis of 1,110,250 meters Substituting in and pushing through a calculator gets 28,800 seconds or 8 hours. Alright, let's apply this to something new. What if I wanted to create a similar network around Minmus? I rather like the 12 hour period for the relays, so let's stick with that and figure out what radius we need. To do this, we need to take our formula and rearrange it for A. We'll start by dividing over the 2 pi then square both sides to get rid of the square root and multiply over the mu. While we were at it, we swapped the sides so that a is now on the left. I don't like how the mu is outside the bracket, so let's write it as the square root of mu squared so that we can slide it into the brackets with everything else. Finally, to get rid of the cube, we take the cube root of both sides, which is the same as raising everything by the exponent of one third. Finally, powers of powers can be simplified by multiplying the exponents yielding this. Not the prettiest formula in the world, but it is what it is. 12 hours is 43,200 seconds. We substitute in, along with the standard gravitational parameter for Minmus, get out our calculator to get 437,035 meters. Minmus has an equatorial radius of 60,000 meters, so we subtract that off to get an altitude of about 377 kilometers. So this is the final orbit that we want for our satellites. Now for the phasing orbit. Recall it needs to have a period that is two-thirds of the final period, which is eight hours, or 28,800 seconds, and have an apoapsis equal to the altitude of the final orbit. All we need to work out is the periapsis. Substituting into the formula and pushing through a calculator gets an A of 333,520 meters. 
Recall that A is the semi-major axis, which is the average of the two orbital radii for an elliptical orbit. R2 is 437,035 meters. We substitute, multiply the 2 over, and subtract the R2 to get an R1 of 230,005 meters. Once again, we subtract off the radius of minimus to get a periapsis of about 170 kilometers. So, to get an identical network around Minmus, we now know the required altitudes of our final orbit and for our phasing orbit. If you would prefer a different period for your final orbit, you can now work out for yourself what altitudes you need. Clearly the process would be the same regardless of the celestial body. Just make sure that your final orbit is within the sphere of influence of the body in question and high enough that the three relays can talk to each other. And with that, we'll draw this video to a close. I hope that you found it useful, and as always, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.